but you're going to show us step by step everything to look for so that these guys can take the oldest mower out there and get it fine tuned and adjusted so it's cutting like it was the day it came off the factory floor. That's right, we just want to get it cut and good again. So really what you're doing is right now you're not leveling the deck, you're leveling the frame and the machine itself right. to the ground first before you even begin to look at the deck. Is that right? That's right. And, and that's the biggest step everybody forgets about. Nobody looks at it. So if you flatten the tire, cut it, chances of you buying the exact same one on, was on there are pretty rare. Man. Okay, so if the guys go out and put a new tire on, they puncture one, even though they're putting the same size tire on, that may not have the same circumference. Well, it, it says it's the same size on the side of the tire, but it doesn't necessarily mean it is actually the same size. Okay. So this one here was 73 inches, this yep. one was 71. Okay. So if I try to put these on the same one. That's the same tire. They're two inches off. You so you can stretch it out. You can't shrink it. Can't shrink so you, it. You've got to stretch. So you, you've got two tires. Your track, your machine's not tracking right. You measure the circumference of the tires, and then whichever one is bigger, you've got to take the smaller tire, blow it beyond what its rated psi is, leave it set in the sun to expand it out, and then put it back down, and then and then put it back on. Right. <clears throat> so tires are no different than a bag of balloons, right? You pull them out, they're not the same size. You blow it up and you stretched it out. Yeah. It's rubber. You guys can probably get a machine to track straight going forward. The problem is when you put it out into the neutral, now this tire's gonna be trying to roll backwards. And you set my parking brake, you're gonna start burning up the hydro. What? What? All, all the guy was trying to do is get his machine to drive straight and he burned up his hydro. So, I had no clue. Yeah. All right, thanks Fred. You thanks for you. blowing my mind one more time. Honestly, I had no clue. I've never heard of that in my entire life. I mean, I've been working on equipment my whole life. Never heard of that. Yeah, so the unit's got a little over 2,000 hours. Probably okay. still original tires. Okay. And the big issue with that is, is there are no flats, right? They're still not flat yet, but there's no rubber left in them. It's just a super thick carcass. Okay. So on, on this one here, landscapers love them because there's no flat tires, right? Right. The problem is all the tread's worn off of them. Now the whole machine's setting too low. And that's putting their deck out of adjustment? Right, that's the problem. So okay. they've already maxed out the adjustment. And we're, we're, we're maxed out. I have no more adjustment there. Okay. Looks like, looks like they got brand new tires on the rear on newer tires. So would that throw the rake out? Rake's out a little bit. Actually, the rake's not bad in this one. It just, by these wearing down the front or the back end coming up, rake's pretty good on this one. All right, guys. <laughs> Fred and I are already getting into it. <laughs> guys, I want you to meet Fred. You are the senior service technician for Xmark at their factory where they build all these things, right? Yeah, that's right. How long have you been doing this? Uh, this fall will be 26 years. So 26 years, and you and I talked on the phone for about three minutes, and I was like, I was with Lloyd, yep. and I'm like, Lloyd, I gotta get Fred out here. What do I gotta do? Do I gotta fly to him? And so then Xmark actually arranged for you to come here, but you're gonna show us how to get the mower back in adjustment, because a lot of guys are having issues with cut quality. If, correct me if I'm wrong, but what would happen to I me? Mean, what makes cut quality issues? Is it wearing out of tires of different operators I mean, what, what can so we so for me when I troubleshoot over the phone I ask them what's wrong with the cut you know so if they're scalping the ground I'm too low right yeah if it's stair stepping I know it's it's cutting uneven when they go down and back okay. so that's the tricky one a lot of people forget about is is that if you have that where you're going down and back and you see the decks not level or the cuts not level okay you matched left side with left side right side with right side so it's the whole unit that's moving and not just the deck. This side just didn't suddenly jump up a half inch. So what you're saying is when you go down, if you're out of level one way, and then when you come back, that's stair stepping. Right. And then it's like the opposite way. So it's like your lawn look kind of looks like that. Would that be a fair Well, so when, when, you, when you go down back, you're going to look at the lines, right? Where you yep. match up your overlap. Yep. You're going to see that one's a half inch off than the other. Okay. But you match the same side with the same side. Okay. So, and basically what happens is you've got a castor that's light in the air. So it's 
So why could be change the rear tire, bad bearings, bad tires? But you're gonna show us step by step everything to look for so that these guys can take the oldest mower out there and get it fine-tuned and adjusted so it's cutting like it was the day it came off the factory floor? That's right, we just wanna get it cut and good again. The so thing. the first thing that I always do is make sure I have even cash support ground pressure. So a lot of shop floors ain't perfectly flat, but you wanna find the best one you can, okay? Okay. So the other thing is you can see where this concrete was cut. Yeah. You try to stay on one slab because the concrete's gonna heave, that's why they cut it. Okay, so the, I wanna stop, slow down. What his Fred is saying here is your floor has to be perfectly level before you should start adjusting your deck? Well, you want as level as you can get it. Okay, okay. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, that's right. okay. And here again, being one square where they cut the concrete, mm -hmm. you're gonna have best luck stay on one square and not sitting on two different squares. Okay. So. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you wouldn't split the difference and right. go down this line right here. And then and there's a line back here. Okay. And then just cut back there on the other side. Okay, so okay, so we've, we've got the most level ground we can possibly work off from. Where, what do we do next? So first thing I, I'm going to do is I'm going to check to make sure these cast forks have even ground pressure. So basically what I do. I pick the deck up. And I just use any board, whatever you got, grab some blocks. Okay, but don't your boards have to be the same, Fred? Nope. Because all I'm going to use these blocks for is to take the weight off the machine. Oh, all right. okay. And so these decks, you know, we're probably looking at a 60 deck. This deck probably weighs 250 pounds. So if I take the weight off of it, I can tell if I have a light caster for it. If oh. I have all the weight hanging on to it, I probably can't feel it. Okay. So. drop down and typically what I do is I go ahead and pin it down can you pin it down you pin it in the so top? we have some stored energy here with the spring so right now I still got my, my chains ain't 100% loose usually so my rear ones still have a little bit of weight on them front ones a little bit light so if I can take this height adjuster Now they're for sure uh, Okay. Okay, so you want all the weight off from the machine itself. So if I had a light caster and you could come stand on that fork, I would never be able to feel it, right? Okay. Because I put weight onto it. So all I do is look at the casters and just see how they feel. And this is pretty good. Okay. So if it wasn't good, would this one be doing the crappy floppy and that one would be sitting solid? That's right. Okay. So, so and on this one, it's actually good. So. Nobody ever checks this. You can't level a deck until you have even force on both casters. So what, ha what happens if the casters are off? What, then what? Well, you have to start looking. Okay. So it could be bad bearings in the front end, either in the wheel or the cast fork. A lot of times what happens is somebody cut a tire, they ruin the tire. Not all these tires are the same size. Okay. Kind of have to, we match them up at the factory. So if that happens, you've got a bigger tire here, it puts more weight over there, this whole machine's we're percent heavy, right? So then this cast will come off the top of the ground. Oh, so your back tires can affect your front casters as well as having a bad bearing in the back. That's right. Everything right? pretty much. And it. just when you thought we were done, Fred keeps talking, blowing my mind. All right, so how does this work, Fred? So a lot of times when people have a tracking issue, we were just talking about deck leveling, but the big thing about matching your tire sizes up, which frustrates a lot of people is tracking, getting the machine to go straight. So when I shove this stick all the way forward, and they're both forward, these are even, right? Yeah. But this machine tends to go this way. Okay. So that's the stagger of the rear tires. Okay. So just like I told you earlier, simple math. Let's say this one's 13 inches in circumference. So you actually measure the tire. At the factory, we measure every one of them and we match the stagger on the tires as close as we can. So you actually take a tape measure all the way around the tire on both sides to try to get them up. So you can see on this one here, see the three? Yeah. That means that this one was 73 inches in circumference. Okay. And so, so then on this side, is this the- Well, this? sometimes they get wiped off. Let's look at this one here. Yeah, that one's wiped off. Okay. So if the guys go out and just randomly replace a tire- So this one was 71. 
one. Oh man. Okay. So if the guys go out and put a new tire on, they puncture one, even though they're putting the same size tire on, that may not have the same circumference. Well, it, it says it's the same size on the side of the tire, but it doesn't necessarily mean it is actually the same size. Okay. So this one here was 73 inches, this yep. one was 71. Okay. So if I try to put these on the same one. That's the same tire. They're two inches off. Tractable plugging when somebody on a 90 degree day put 35 pounds of air in it. Right. It expands the tire and they bring it back down to 13, it's still a bigger tire. Yeah. So what we did is it's a bias ply tire, we just stretched it out. So if you flatten the tire, cut it, chances of you buying the exact same one that was on there is pretty rare. So let's say the brand new tire you got here was 75 inches in circumference. We're going to take that one off. Uh -huh. We're going to shove probably 50, 60 pounds of air in it. Let it sit in the sun for a while. It'll actually stretch the, the plies in the tire and you'll get it back to where you match them up or get them as close as you can. So you can stretch it out. You can't shrink it. Can't so shrink you, it. You've got it straight. So you, you've got two tires. Your track, your machine's not tracking right. You measure the circumference of the tires. And then whichever one is bigger, you've got to take the smaller tire, blow it beyond what its rated PSI is, leave it set in the sun to expand it out, and then put it back down and then, and then put it back on. Right. <clears throat> so tires are no different than a bag of balloons, right? You, you pull them out, they're not the same size. You blow it up and you stretched it out. Yeah. It's rubber. Oh, that is, I never knew that. Yeah. Man. Holy. So, and, and, and the reason we do that is you only have so much tracking in these. Yeah. So what tracking is, is the speed of these two tires rotating as you go down, right? So we have so much free travel or neutral in the, the hydro system. Yeah. Because when, I, when I'm here, I'm in neutral. If I pull back a little bit, I'm going in reverse, right? And I go forward, forward. So that distance between, we can cheat those a little bit. And that's our tracking system. Uh -huh. So we can adjust that to get this one all the way to the forward, get this one all the way to the reverse. And that would make up for a tire that's too big on that side. Now, X mark, we do one more thing. We can also adjust this. We can loosen these two up and we can knock this plate back to the fastest one and you can get the machine track straight that way. Oh, so you can adjust there as well right. on either side. I, but I, I, you, you only got so much. So usually it's tire pressure, but more so it's the circumference of the tire that's off. That's why it's tracking. I had no clue. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Fred. You Thanks for you. blowing my mind one more time. Honestly, I had no clue. I've never heard of that in my entire life. I mean, I've been working on equipment my whole life. Never heard that. That's nuts. You know it, right? Look at Lonnie smug in the back. Actually, oh, we usually jack up the back end too. Get somebody on it. Leave it neutral. When there's no weight on the tires, you can see the one tire is maybe going forward. That's where you do your your small adjustments. Well, what do you mean? So you put a put your floor jack. I don't know if you can show. Me. Well, so well, I, yeah, I just run a floor jack underneath the back. Okay, right into the center. Yep. Start right. it up, idle it, move the arms in, sit on the seat, and just move the arms in, and see what happens. As soon as you take the weight off. One tire might start creeping forward, one might be still, one might be going in reverse. That's where you can do the small adjustments to get them both neutral. That, that's where you, you wouldn't mess with the tire circumference, you would... <laughs> you'd mess with this. You'd yeah. mess with this. But so, what does mess with this mean? What would what well, would So what Lonnie's what getting to is, you guys can probably get a machine to track straight going forward. The problem is when you put it out into the neutral, now this tire is going to be trying to roll backwards. When you set my parking brake, you're going to start burning up the hydro. Don't want to be driving the tire while the brake is on. You'll hear that noise where it's stopping it. You're actually stopping the wheel motor from moving. <laughs> oh, I love the look on Fred's face like, yeah, that's a real thing, man. I'm just like going, what, yeah, what? All, all the guy was trying to do is get his machine to drive straight and he burned up his hydro. Okay, so okay, pretty much everything, people think it works front to rear. On these, it's actually in an X pattern. Is that is this universal or is that just on X mark or is that just pretty much any any zero turn would be the same thing as long as you didn't have a suspension system on it. Okay, what about a stand down? Same. 
Same? Yep. So this walk behind so this, the same. So this procedure is the same for all of them. Right. Okay. okay. So you, you gotta remember you got a deck that's su suspended from a frame. I'm just making sure the frame's level to the ground. So really what you're doing is right now you're not leveling the deck, you're leveling the frame and the machine itself right. to the ground first before you even begin to look at the deck. Is that right? That's right. Uh -huh. Okay. And and that's the biggest step everybody forgets about. Nobody looks at it. Is that always first? Is that the very first thing you always want to do? You can't level a deck until you figure out that you have even weight sitting on the tire. So once we identify this, so right now we can level the deck. I have even ground pressure. We're good to go. Okay, so, we're, so we've got even ground pressure. We know our machine is good, but we're still getting a little slop in the deck or something. Where, where are we at? Yeah, and right now, so a lot of times, say, uh, whenever somebody brings th this unit in for service, a lot of the service guys, all they're going to do is check the level, right? Okay. So guy wasn't really complaining about something. If there was something else going on, um, they, they, they would look elsewhere. But say, say you had one that the uh, cut, right in the middle of the cutting width, it wasn't cutting even, right? Mm -hmm. So you got like a mohawk or a cornrow, okay. grass that was missed. Something's bent on the deck. That doesn't really apply to this. We're just kind of re-leveling or checking the deck. Okay, but that, that's still one of the things, if, if the guy's starting this process, that may be one of the reasons why he's cutting it, if he's got that cornrow or mohawk going on. What, what do you mean the deck, something wrong? So, so bent blade, bent deck, maybe bent spindle, they hit something. Believe it or not, people hit things every once in a while when they're mowing. <laughs> yeah, especially when you test mowers the way I test yeah. them, you tend to hit Well, them. and being a service guy, it'd be nice to know that because then I know where to look. Okay. So. Okay, so we've got the frame level. What are we looking at? What's the number? Next? So now what we're going to do is we're going to put all the weight of the deck back onto the casters. That way the whole unit sags. Uh -huh. That's how it's going to be running on the ground. I can level the deck from there. Okay, so. let's, let's do it. Pull my pin out. And everybody does a little bit different on their um, cutting height and stuff like that. So when I check my height, mm -hmm. I just use a socket. So you were saying that you forgot your socket. Well, you didn't have like a lucky socket or something? Well, I, don't, I didn't forget it. The airport took it from me. But <laughs> I have an old worn out 15, 16 socket that Did I use. Did they seriously take your socket from you? Yeah, I think I can get it back. It's back in hometown, so it's a small town. I think I can still get it. Okay, okay, so I, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I'm just like, no. why would they take a socket? But okay, go ahead. Yeah. Sorry, 15, 16. So, so what I do is I just grab a socket, I measure it, so three and a quarter, okay? Okay. So we're gonna gauge it. So being a lawnmower blade, most of them, there, there's a lot of measurements you can get from this. So the lawnmower blade, it's about a quarter inch thick. Okay. So if, if I put this up there and I'm level to the, the blade, mm -hmm. I know I'm about a quarter inch low, right? Okay. So and if I usually if I can stick my thumbnail underneath there, I'm about an eighth of an inch, I can get my whole thumb under there, half inch. Okay. So I'm just using that as a gauge block. So, wait, don't you have to take all of the, the blocking out right now, Fred? I do. That's my next step. Okay. I just want to make sure we actually do this exactly the way. Sorry if I'm blocking off the camera. You guys don't keep going, Fred. Okay. You don't have to stop. I just I want to make sure all the cameras are capturing this. I actually want, it, I want these guys to visually see exactly what you're doing. So, my block's three and a quarter, or my uh, gate block's three and a quarter. What I'm going to do is put this in three and a quarter. Okay, so your gauge block is three and a quarter. Right. So you set your deck height at three and a quarter. That's correct. And you're using, so you're just using a socket. That's your, your gauge height. So guys can use whatever they want, but you've always used a 15, 16 inch socket because it's just muscle memory at that point. You're just... Well, the nice thing is, is that a lot of people try to measure or take an actual measurement. Yeah. We really don't care. Sometimes it's hard to see underneath there. So all I do is use a gauge block and I can tell what the height is without laying down underneath it. Oh, without trying to get a tape measure, right. and get it in there. Yeah, 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 yeah. So when we're actually, what you're saying, this is kind of a different story, but when Frankie's building decks, he's got to get the spindles to the same height. He uses, he just cuts a block, sets it up there, puts a post in, puts a post in. He never measures. He just puts the same that's, block. That's exactly what we do at the factory. We just use a gauge block. Okay, got it. So I've got my blocks out. 
And you got your deck height set to three and a quarter. Three and a quarter. You got your gauge mechanism right there. Yep. Your socket. So, and obviously you want to make sure the blades are in good shape, you know, brand new blades. So I just come in here and I gauge it. So I can feel that I'm a little bit lower. So I'm guessing I'm probably about three eighths, maybe not quite a half. Okay. And then when I come to the back, I'm going to simply see how much rake oh, is in there. Is, do you want that much rake? So, well, no, you are, you're not on the blade, you're on the deck right now, Lonnie. No. Oh, wait, are you on the blade? Right there. Okay. So I'm about an eighth of an inch high in the back. Yeah, I was going to say, that looks like it's definitely high. Yep. Okay, so if you guys missed it, this deck is sitting kitty wampus forward, leaning forward. So we call that positive rake or pitch. Okay, so the rake is the angle of the whole deck and positive negative i mean is there well, tell me about that so there's a lot of different reasons why you put rake into it and stuff like that but pretty much the the nuts and bolts of it is when you add that pitch or that rake to the deck uh -huh. it really helps with discharge oh so, so you want some rake typically how much rake do you want in a deck so usually you want anywhere from an eighth to probably a half somewhere in there. Some people, depending when you go down south, some of their breeds of grass that they have or species is they'll cut flat. They'll have zero rake in them. Maybe a seasonal adjustment too? Is there times of the season when you want more rake? So or? I get a lot of guys that want to try and mess with rake and stuff like that. So usually I tell them to do it with rear tire pressure. Okay. So if you start out about 12, 13 pounds, what we recommend, mm -hmm. if you want to flatten your rake out, go down about eight pounds in each rear tire. That'll take the whole machine and flatten it out. Uh huh. So if you want to try positive rake, jack the tire pressure up, I don't know, probably 25 pounds. And that'll help with discharge. Well, it'll give you more rake, which actually makes that air flow out of it. Okay. So yeah. flat isn't always the best. No. Usually, I mean, probably 80% of the time, you want positive rake into it. Okay. So too much positive rake, you'll get a lot of strugglers. No rake, you'll get a real heavy discharge when run. Oh, got it. So it depends on what you're mowing. So you'll adjust the tires before you go and try to even begin. You haven't t touched the deck yet. So. A lot of times guys don't know what they have. And you know what? You can call me and I can ask you a bunch of questions to try to figure it out. Okay. But if we just do tire pressure and we drop that down to eight pounds and that fixes your quality of cut, we can get back into the dealership. We can say, hey, we need to take the rake out. We'll set your tire pressure back. We'll adjust the links down to take the rake out and you're good. Okay. So when do we start to actually adjust the deck? So basically what we want to do is see how it's setting. So I did the uh, discharge blade, and this is where it's, you can't quite see the other blade. But you've got to get under there and you've got to measure so, all of your blades, so right? This, yep, so this is three and a quarter. I don't really care about the measurement, I just want to know what's setting. Okay, so you just want to go by feel at this point. That's right. Okay. So this one just barely clears, so I mean it's less than an eighth of an inch. And this one we're setting just about the same as on the front. So about three eighths, maybe a half low. Okay. The other one that everybody forgets, and this is where true rake is. So true rake is the pitch from the rear outside blades to the front center. That's your measurement, not on one blade. Wait, what? Yep. So <laughs> most people always measure rake on one blade. Okay. The bad thing with that is it's actually to the front center. So, and this is the way they all are. So if you look, my cutter housings are not in line, right? These two outside ones, this one's farther forward. Mm -hmm. So when you pitch that, this front tip drops lower. Okay, yeah. So if yep. you measure it off one blade, you got a lot more rake than what you think in it. Oh. Okay, so you really need front center blade to the, either one of the back blades, right? So you need both rear to the front center, that's rake. Or that, pitch. That's rake or pitch. Yeah. And that's where you get your, your real finesse of getting it exactly right. Well, you just know where you're setting. So if you make adjustments from there, you're either going up or down. Okay. So, so being no flat tires, what happened is basically wore the rubber off. So now this whole thing supports the front end weight. That's why the front end is so low and the back end is pretty close to where it's supposed to be. So then these guys, they, and they're out of adjustment. So you said that they're, I mean, their deck can't be adjusted. Right here, you can see we're maxed out. 
So the next step for these guys is to replace these front tires. So if you come look at the machine, it's got about 2,000 hours on it. Okay. So, so it's pick, time. Yeah, so your pickup, that's probably about 90,000 miles. Uh-huh. 2,000 hours on a mower is like 90,000 miles on a pickup. Every one of these is a little bit different. On this one, what actually is wrong with the machine is the front casters are just simply wore out. The guy still wants to run them, right? Because they're not actually broken or split or anything like that, which I don't disagree, run them until they break. You just gotta compensate. I can't get you no more adjustment. Um, guys that run hillside a lot, they'll probably run, oh, usually around 15, 18 PSI on the tires. Okay. Because when you get all the machine loaded weight over there, that, that's where you'll see that stair stepping on the hillside, right? You uh -huh. just have too low a tire pressure, all the weight loaded to the left-hand side of the machine, and it dipped down in the cut. So you need more tire pressure if you're noticing stair stepping on hills. Right. Compensates for the weight of the machine just loading on that downhill tire. Oh, because you have too much pressure on this side. It's going to squash this. It's going to make this side stair step down mm -hmm. and vice versa as you flip around the other side. And the other thing that we see common is somebody cut a rear tire, right? I mean, everybody's plugged the rear tire, but if you cut one and put a brand new one on there, mm -hmm. typically that tire is going to be either larger or smaller than the other one. So that's where you're going to measure tire circumference. Okay. So, and typically when you have a problem with the cut, if it's from side to side, it's usually tires, bad caster, bent caster forks are another big one. And the Mohawk is a bent deck itself. Bent deck, bent blade, or bent spindle. Bent, bent deck, blade, or spindle. And stair stepping on a hill is too low tire pressure. That's right. And stair stepping on flat ground is. Again, so typically that stair stepping on a flat ground means you have a caster fork that's light. Okay. Your, 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 your frame's not level to the ground. So that means one of your back tires is off. Or you got bad bearings in the front end, bent fork. Or, okay, yeah. got it. All right, I, I got it. I, I got it, I hope you guys got it. Big thanks to Fred. Big thanks to Xmark. They flew him in from Lincoln, Nebraska just to do this video with us. So thank you. You bet. I appreciate it. Hey, thank you. Thank you so much. You guys tell me in the comments down below, was this video helpful? And this guy is just an expert. So what else would you like to see from him? Because I mean, if you guys got questions, Fred, will you kind of check the comments on the video? Maybe you could help answer some Sure. Stuff? Good. There you go. Can't beat that. That's all I got for you guys. God bless. Go get in you guys. Check out these other two videos right here. And big thanks to Xmark for this one today. See you on the next one, you guys. That was great. Yeah. 25 minutes. You said you had five minutes worth of material. Well. Five minutes. This guy doesn't know how to tell time. He can just a deck like nobody's business, but he can't tell time. He kept asking me questions. <laughs> <laughs>